Hi, everybody. This is Pastor Brian Beisel. I'm here at Trinity Lutheran Church in the sanctuary, and I'm here to do this afternoon's youth devotion. So let me share a piece of scripture, then I'll talk a little bit. And I want to talk about something that's pertinent to all of us, I think. Kids of all ages, if you're two, if you're 92, if you're 102, if you're the oldest person in the world, or if you're the youngest newborn, I think it pertains to all of us. These are words from Jesus in Luke's Gospel. This is from Luke 12, and I'm going to read three verses for you, 32, 33, and 34. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys for where your treasure is there, your heart may be also. All right. So Jesus starts this saying by talking about fear and saying, do not be afraid because your father wants to give you the kingdom of heaven. And that's supposed to give us a lot of faith and positivity and inspiration and hope. All of those good things, that's what we're supposed to get from that. And we do. We get that hope. We know that regardless of what happens here on earth, God wants us to give us the kingdom. And we're going to get that kingdom. Not because, not because of our goodness, but because of God's goodness. Because God loves us. And I try to talk about that love pretty consistently when I talk with kids. Because I think kids, need, you need to hear that. You need to hear the message consistently that God loves you. Because sometimes we get other messages in this world about other sources and other people who maybe don't know how to tell us that. I know too many fathers out there who have a hard time saying, I love you. Know that God loves you. Know also that God wants you to be safe, wants you to protect yourself, wants you to be in a good state. So when he says, do not fear, you know, some people hear, do not fear, and think, well, that means I can do whatever I want, and I won't have to be afraid, right? I won't have fear. So I want to talk to all the kids who are watching this about fear. Fear can be a good thing because it can protect us from doing foolish things. Let me tell you a story about something your pastor did when he was young. This was when I was uh, beginning of my sixth grade year at North Schuylkill, Frackville Elementary. When I was a kid, I grew up on Center Street in Frackville, two blocks down from the Little League Field, and behind the Little League Field, looks very different now, they, tr they cleared out a lot of those trees, but it was this heavily forested area, and part of what was back there was an old train station. And in a matter of fact, I remember there even being a couple of trains that had been abandoned. And for bored kids who lived in that neighborhood, something we often did was we walked into those wooded areas and we explored the ruins of the train station. We loved it back there. There was an old mine cave, Frankie's Cave we called it. I was back there the one Sunday. It was after church. My friend Tim and I had gone. Didn't name Timmy after him, by the way. Good guy, though. Um, Tim and I went back there and explored like we often did and we went through the ruins and part of this was there was this big cement wall all of a sudden right after the old trains and the cement wall separated one level of the woods from another it was obvious it was a part of the old train station it was probably about a 30 foot drop off 25 to 30 foot something like that it was big and I remember myself starting to walk along the edge, like a balanced beam, one foot in front of the other. I remember my friend Tim saying, Brian, you shouldn't do that. And me saying, oh, I'm fine, I can do this. I wanted to impress him. Like we do stupid things when we want to impress each other sometimes, don't we? We do foolish things and we do things that we regret because we want someone to like us. When the fact of the matter is, we should want them to like us exactly for who we are, not for who we think they want us to be. And I should have had fear. I should have listened to the fear that was inside of me. 
because a couple feet ahead there was this tree root that was hanging over the edge. And because I am not exactly a person who has, what do they call that? <laughs> Coordination. I'm not a well-coordinated person. Never was. I wasn't back then, and I'm not now. I tripped. I didn't see the root until it was too late, and I tripped over it. And before you know it, because of the way I, I landed, I was hanging off the edge. There was that 30-foot drop. And I remembered Tim trying to rush to get over to me, and me thinking, how's he going to pull me up? He, I, I'm easily twice his size, because I was. I was a husky kid, and Tim was, was a light kid at that point still is. I am still husky too. <laughs> and I remember him getting to me just as I lost my grip and started to fall and I felt a bam. This is all because I didn't listen to the fear inside of myself. I didn't listen to, the, to God's presence in me saying, stop! <laughs> and I fell. And I remember this bam, this feeling of this, this impact. And there was this wall, and there was this rock thing that kind of jutted out from it, and that's what happened. And I remember seeing air, ground, air, ground, air, ground, womp, flat on my back. In hindsight, my friend Tim told me what had happened as I hit that thing, I started to spin. And he said, I really spun rapidly, and I'm lucky I landed on my back, because if I would have landed another way, I might not be here to tell this tale. And I felt all the breath go out of me. Felt like I couldn't breathe for a good long while. Tim went around and there was this, this part further on, on ahead where it was kind of this, this grade you could walk down. And he walked down and he got to me on the ground and I don't think I had gotten up yet. Finally I sat up and, and I, I just, I had the wind knocked out of me and then some. All because I didn't have the fear I should. We can be foolish when we're trying to impress other people. Peer pressure makes us do that. We need to avoid those things and those instincts and just be ourselves. And there are things to fear in this world. Right now we have this virus going on. We should take it seriously. We shouldn't stop our lives, like living our lives. We, we need to get up in the morning and be with our families. And yes, we need to be inside right now until things are lifted. But we need to take care of ourselves and the ones we love in the meantime. Do not fear doesn't mean go out and be foolish. It doesn't. Yes, God will give us the kingdom, and in the end, everything is going to be all right, and that's the hope of our faith. But in the meantime, we have this life, and we have to take care of each other and the ones we love, and even the ones we don't love. And part of that is living knowing fear is going to be a part of our journey. But it's not a part of our journey we go through alone because God promises to be with us. Then Jesus goes on to tell us, wherever our treasure is, there our heart will be also. And I think that's, that's a really interesting thing. Martin Luther said something very, very similar. Martin Luther, who started the Lutheran church, which we worship in, he said that you can tell what is your true God by what you spend your time doing and how you spend your time with other people and what, what motivates you. And there can be fear in that too. Because sometimes we're not motivated by our relationship with God. We're, related, we're, we're motivated by our desire for things. Those of you who are younger, maybe right now you're desiring a Nintendo Switch. If you don't have one right now, they're all the rage. Ever since everything happened, people started buying them up. And now you can go on eBay and buy a Nintendo Switch for like $500, like twice as much as they would cost you in a store. You can't find them in a store. A lot of stores aren't even open. There's that fear of doing without, that fear of not being like everybody else. We are called to love as Jesus loved us. 
And so that means our treasure is in our ability to care and love the people around us and to think about who they are and where they've been and to treat them with as much kindness and grace and mercy as we can. And I, use, I throw those words around a lot, grace and mercy, because I think that's how we truly confront fear, grace and mercy. And maybe, maybe, maybe if you're a kid, you don't understand what I mean by grace and mercy. So let me just say grace is like if you have a teacher and you've done something, uh, you know, somebody did all their work in their class and they got an A and you didn't do as well, but the teacher would still give you an A. That's grace. That's God accepting us and loving us even with our brokenness. Mercy, mercy, that is when you act in forgiveness to somebody, that's mercy. So maybe, you know, maybe some people would say an eye for an eye. Well, when Jesus talks about an eye for an eye in Scripture, he, he says no. He throws that right out. We're supposed to act in love. So I just want to say this before I close. All you kids who are watching this, there are things to be afraid about in our world right now. But I want you to focus on how you can love others and how you can act out grace in your life to people and how you can act in mercy too. Have a good week, have a good rest of the week, and I will see you here again next week. Thank you very much. Bye.